Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna turn a big awkward cabinet into a rollout pantry. We're back here in the kitchen. We've got a whole bunch of projects left to do here. And one of those is building custom inserts for a lot of these different cabinets. The one we're gonna do today is actually a really big utility piece. Currently, this is a door that just hinges out, but we're gonna change that because we've actually changed our mind about what's gonna go here. Instead, this door is gonna be on the front of an almost another cabinet that's gonna come out, a really big thing that can hold a bunch of food and trash bags and stuff like that, but also, brooms and vacuum cleaners. Overall, it's gonna be a pretty straightforward cabinet build, but we have to make sure that it's strong enough to carry the weight of the cabinet itself on slides and also all the things in it. Let's head down to the shop. So this is gonna be really basic. It's gonna be a box split into two, and then this section will have adjustable shelves in it that we can change up and down depending on what we need to put in there. This side is gonna be mostly open with a place to hang our vacuum cleaner and uh, some brooms and stuff like that. And we're also gonna have to have some power in here so that the vacuum cleaner can charge. So I'm gonna start by making the box, then we'll deal with all the inside stuff later on. So far we've just put the outer box here together with some butt joints with glue and screws. Now that's not gonna be terribly strong because this thing is gonna be coming out of the cabinet this way and it could flex, it could turn a lot like this and you don't want that. So we're gonna to need to reinforce it on the inside. Since it's a basic box, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about how we're gonna put it together so that we can add some structure on the inside of it to keep it held up. Now the biggest thing by far is gonna be the back panel. That's gonna be cut to these inside dimensions out of half inch plywood and dropped all the way in and it's gonna to touch all four sides. That's gonna stop the entire thing from being able to rack quite as much as it could before. But also, we're gonna add a center piece down here through the middle that'll get tied to the back panel and to the top and the bottom. And we're also gonna add some fixed shelves in here that will lock that center piece to the outside. Also, on the very bottom edge, we're gonna add a piece that spans all the way across and that'll act as a way to stop stuff from falling out, but also to give it a piece of kind of structure across the bottom that will stop it from being able to rack. So all those things together should be able to keep it in the correct shape. I realized that cutting down that back panel and inserting it is gonna make the interior structure a half of an inch up. So this center divider, even though I cut it like the two sides, I need to make it a little bit less deep to account for that back panel. Now you may have seen that I had the blade raised really high on the table saw, higher than you normally should, but that's because this piece has a crazy curve in it. This is the only piece of plywood I could get the day I went to buy it. So unfortunately, this is what I have to deal with. When I put it into the box, I'm just gonna have to make sure that I can get it as flat as possible on the outsides, screw that in, glue that in, let it dry, and then work on the center to try to get this entire thing as flat as I can make it. Now one of the things about this is that I wanted to drop this piece in, but um, not smear glue all over the inside. So I'm actually gonna lay the bottom piece underneath the cabinet put glue around the outside edge and then try to wiggle this down over top of it. It's not gonna be super graceful, but it will stop glue from being smeared on this surface because I wanna keep this bare wood if I can and not paint this part.
I went ahead and got some edge banding on the outside of this plywood, and we've got a whole bits video about edge banding. You've probably seen me do it a billion times, but if you need any tips or pointers about that, go check out that bits video. I've got that on and sanded down smooth, and so now I'm gonna start working on the shelves. And originally I was planning on those shelves being adjustable. We we're gonna make some holes in the side and be able to move them up and down, but the more I thought about it, I really don't think there's a need to. This particular height is gonna hold tall things like bags of chips and cereal boxes, and if you lay those in here, you only get about four shelves. So I think instead of making it adjustable that we probably won't take advantage of, we're just gonna have three fixed shelves, four spaces, and we're gonna add the piece along the bottom. I've already got this area marked out right here for this piece of cherry. And so I'm gonna cut that out and then put this in as an extra stringer across the bottom. Then we're gonna use the same cherry to put the face on each of these shelves. All right, I've got these pieces cut down and basically we're just gonna put this on the front of the plywood to act as a stringer, but also as a little ledge. So I wanna make sure that it is uniformly lifted up over the top. And to do that, I've just got a piece of scrap material. I'm gonna lay this down on the table and then put the shelf on it upside down so that when this piece sits down, it will overhang the thickness of my little scrap. I cut it too deep. I just need to trim off the back of it, but that's really weird. I bet it's exactly an inch over. Yep, I pulled a bob. Totally bobbed it up. I've got one more of these to put in, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding on the whole thing and add some clear coat, and that's really gonna make the cherry pop out. I think that'll really stand out and look nice against all of this other edge banding. Then, once it's dry, we're gonna take it up and try to figure out how to make it actually slide in and out of that cabinet. I carried this thing upstairs into the kitchen, and it's pretty heavy, so we're gonna make a little bit of an adjustment. I've got these non-marking casters. These can hold several hundred pounds a piece, and we've got two of them. And these are five inches, kind of top to bottom. So that fits perfectly on the bottom of this in between this surface and the floor. So we're gonna be adding some of these to that. We're gonna have to make some adjustments over here to account for it. We're gonna have to cut a slot down there in the bottom, but the bigger concern right now is the fact that these drawer slides that I put in that will go on the back of that whole assembly that we've built are actually kind of inaccessible. There's a little lever right here that separates the two parts of the slide. And so if you ever wanna take it out of here completely, you have to be able to hit this lever right here in the middle. And unfortunately with the whole cabinet right here, it's gonna be really hard for me to get my hand back there. But there is a tiny little lever right here that doesn't take much pressure to push. And so my hope is that sticking a stick back there and flicking that little lever on all three of these will release the whole thing. But I also have to cut out the bottom of this cabinet. Like I mentioned before, we weren't planning originally on having this thing come in and out of here. So I went ahead and built it as a cabinet with a door, but now we need to cut a slot right here down through the middle so that two of these casters can roll in and out. And that's also gonna change the kick plate, which is down here. It's just a piece that's put on to this cabinet. So we're gonna take that off and actually attach it in front of one of the wheels. So as you pull this thing out, the kick plate will come with it.
All right, we've got the thing pretty much ready to go in, I think, but before we test it, I wanna go ahead and get the power that's back there routed into the cabinet that comes out. So I've got this little unit, it's basically just a power strip with a long flexible cord. So we're gonna plug this in back there and then mount this on the inside of that cabinet facing in. That way we can plug in the vacuum cleaner and anything else we need to charge. So I'm taking bets, if you want to leave bets down in the comments, as to whether this thing is actually going to go in first try or if I'm going to have to adjust where things are. But I have to make sure that I go ahead and plug this in before we try to actually slide it in, just in case we can't get it back out. So I had to put a spacer underneath the wheels, and I think I didn't account for that spacer when I put the slides in. So they're all an eighth of an inch too high on this part, which is easy enough to fix. I had to switch gears a little bit and I found that having the drawer slides on the back of it allowed it to move this way and this way. And it was really hard to get all that stuff lined up and in there. So, Instead, I put the slides on the top, and there's actually two of them, you can see up here, and that guides it forward and backward and tries not to let it turn as much. Now the wheels in the bottom are parallel as best as I could get them, so they stay pretty well in line, and it does open and close. Now it doesn't run super smoothly, not as, as smoothly as if it were a drawer, but that's because the weight of this entire thing is actually sitting down on the wheels. So you do have to push it a little bit, but it does close and it does open easily, so now we just gotta put the door face on this at a handle, and this thing's done. I think the last thing to add here is to take the toe kick that was originally on the cabinet and put it on this entire mechanism so it covers up the wheel, and I want it to move with it. That means it needs to be moved up so it doesn't drag on the floor a little bit, but also because it's going on this surface, we got a little bit of a difference to make up. So have a little block, and we're gonna screw those together and then screw this to the bottom of the cabinet. There'll be a little tiny gap here at the bottom, and this should be able to move freely. Got the toe kick put on there, and it looks a little funny from this view, but it still needs some white paint. Hopefully that'll hide it a little bit. That's just kind of the way it's gonna be. There is another thing that I realized, though, at this point. So I put the vacuum cleaner in here and hung it where I thought it needed to be. Unfortunately, because of the lengths of the slides, this whole thing didn't come out quite as far as I was hoping it would. So it's back a little bit more. This can come out. It's just not as convenient as I was hoping. The big thing is here that we can store it in here and we can store stuff here, and this thing is done. I had to shift gears quite a few times on this to get this thing to work, but I am really happy with how it turned out because it took what would otherwise be a big, awkward space and made it pretty well organized and pretty useful. This thing is especially deep. It's next to a wall, it's next to a fridge. It's kind of weird, but now we can take advantage of it and use it for quite a bit of stuff. I will recommend, if you ever make something like this, a big rolling pull out, make sure to go ahead and just plan on there being wheels underneath it. It steadies it, it straightens it, and it helps carry the weight, and it is absolutely the way to go. But if you have some other ideas for how to do the inside of something like this, I would love to hear about it because I have a lot more to do. We've also got tons of other projects that you may want to check out, and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Action! <laughs> for real?
but we're gonna add it to this entire unit so that the toku, 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 toku. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.